the Powerful Content Podcast, your go-to source for content creation, strategy, and business inspiration. I'm your host, Mel Daniels, content strategist, coach, and speaker, empowering women across the globe to grow their business with powerful content that connects, nurtures, and converts. So if you're ready to create standout content that gets you noticed and remembered, or build an aligned audience who love you and are ready to buy from you, you're in the right place. I believe that content has the power to connect us all. It's up to you how you use it. Listen in for genuine and insightful chats with guests, as well as practical tools and strategies from me. It's so lovely to have you here. Let's dive into the show. Hello, hello, beautiful people, and welcome to episode 53 of the Powerful Content Podcast. I'm really excited to be talking to my guest today as she is one of the most wise women I know who always knows the right question to ask or the right comment to really get you thinking about where you are right now. I'm joined today by the beautiful Rowena Mabbitt, who is a career and life confidence coach, writer, podcast host, speaker, mother, and consultant. As a certified career and life confidence coach, Rowena works with women and men from all around the world who want to gain clarity and feel more confident in their careers, their business, and their life. So Rowena has a degree in psychology and business law, and prior to becoming a certified life coach, she spent nearly 20 years working as a human resources professional in large corporates with not-for-profits and as an independent consultant with a focus on organizational development, employee engagement, and change management. Rowena has more than 25 years of mentoring and coaching experience. She's based in Sydney, Australia, where she lives with her husband and two sons. Welcome to the podcast, Rowena. Thank you, Mel. It is absolutely fabulous to be here. It's so lovely to have you. Now, Rowena, full disclosure here. I think you're truly one of those remarkable women who has this amazing calming influence and a sense of humor that can shift any situation. I've actually seen you in action leading a school committee under fairly stressful conditions and you are absolutely amazing. In fact, that's how we eventually bonded about a year ago over a mountain of bread rolls that needed to be cut for a school function. But what I'd really love to know, Rowena, is have you always been this way, this amazing calm influence? Mm, That is such a juicy question. Um, I would have to be very honest, Mel, and say probably not. I think the calmness has come with age. Um, I would suggest that most people who knew me in my 20s would not think I was particularly calm. Although that said, I was always very professional in my corporate roles that I had at that time. Um, And I probably did come across as calm, but my loved ones didn't necessarily see that. I'd certainly say my husband would say calm was not a word that he would use to describe me at that point. But I always have had a bit of a sense of humor and an enjoyment of the absurd. So yeah, it's been it's been it's been a uh, learning process to become a little bit more calm. Yes, it, I can, but I can actually imagine you and picture you in that corporate situation, being that that calm influence when everyone's kind of like rushing around, deadlines, things happening, things have to be done. I see you as having this amazing influence and just calming presence that can really get things back on track because I've seen it in action. Yeah, that part's true for sure. Um, I think that's also the nature of the type of work I was doing is Mm -hmm. in corporate HR, you would generally only deal with stuff when it's already pretty bad. Um, You're either asking people to um, apply processes and systems on policies or you're helping them do that or you're dealing with, you know, individual uh, managers who've got problem children, as they call them, um, and therefore they're already feeling really stressed. So you kind of have to bring the calm professional demeanor in order for them to be reassured that you can help them. And so we're actually going to be talking about strengths today. And obviously that calming influence is one of your strengths. But as a career and life confidence coach, I'm sure that you probably see plenty of people who are probably feeling, I don't know, a bit disillusioned or disconnected. What's the best place for anyone to start when they're feeling this way? Look, I think usually it's coming back to yourself. I've been there myself. There have been many times. That's in fact why I ended up becoming a 
or retraining to become a coach was that I was disillusioned and disconnected. Been working as a independent consultant for a while uh, for an organization, but I was effectively working from home a certain number of hours per week. And the working the work was great. It was very interesting. It was um, inspiring work. And I felt like I could be making a difference. But the challenge of being a consultant was it's all care, no responsibility. And so I would make clear recommendations through my the organization I was working with to to the work, the companies we were consulting to. And they'd sort of basically just smile and say, thanks very much, and then not actually fix the problem we'd identified, even though we kind of spelt out, here's what you need to do to remedy this situation. And it got to a point where the companies I was consulting with were doing increasingly kind of bad things that I wasn't really comfortable with. So either inappropriate policies or inappropriate behavior, or sometimes even illegal activities. And so it started to get me very, very stressed. And so whilst I knew I wasn't responsible for others' actions, or in this case, like a lack of action, I was actually in really deep conflict. So I was, it just didn't feel right for me at all. It conflicted with my values and it was a seriously uncomfortable place to be. So I, you know, eventually I actually decided to follow my dream. I resigned from that role and well, from that project. And then I had a few, few weeks of just kind of thinking about what I wanted to do because that, that discomfort meant that I knew that there was something wrong and I needed to identify, well, how can I fix this? And so basically I, decided I'd followed the dream of 10 years prior, which was to retrain as a coach. So that was back in 2015 now that I decided to retrain as a coach. But yeah, so it was that discomfort. And I think the, the key there was actually kind of stopping and saying, okay, what's, what is the problem here? And so I, I did a bunch of exercises and activities to identify for myself, kind of coached myself through that process of going, well, how do I fix this? What can I do? What is the problem? So it sounds to me like you really took a step back, gave yourself that time and that space, importantly, to really think back to, I guess, your purpose. Like, what is it that you want to do in life and what is it that you really want to bring to the world and be remembered for? And for you, that came from that place of feeling disillusioned, disconnected, having that mm. sense of discomfort. So you said that you coached yourself through a process. What are some of the things that you helped yourself to to pull out? Um, and I guess I'm really referring here to how did you decide that you wanted to be a life coach? Was it something specific? Okay, that's a great question. I did a number of different exercises, some of which I'm happy to, like, they're really easy and basically all you need is a bit of paper and a pen. I did, of course, lots of pros and cons lists because that was my rational brain. And then I also did some, which were, there was one called the I want, or I would like, um, sorry, not I want, I would like. And so it basically you just list out all the things you'd like in your entire life as sentences. So you just say, I would like, you know, to be respected. I would like to do work that matters. I would like, and I just kept going until I filled about three pages. And through that process, I actually started to see the themes emerging around I actually wanted to do work that made a difference to people, not just, and actually, and see them be able to take action. And so through that and working through what the themes were, I actually spoke to a coach myself, um, a life coach, and I kind of got a sense of what they were doing was very similar to what I'd been doing all this time anyway. I just didn't know necessarily that that's what it was. And so I went back to this. I thought, yes, I do used to want to be a coach. And I'd explored that back when I was, I don't know, 27, 28 um, but at that time, someone had told me that I didn't have enough life to have been a life coach. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I set it aside. And I was also still in the busy stage of climbing the corporate career and, you know, planning ahead for maternity leave and lots of stuff like thinking about, okay, I need to have a certain type of income in order to fund maternity leave to have right start our family. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I think it was very much the stepping back, as you've said, and then doing a little bit of journaling type of work. So I definitely took pen and paper and some some reflection on what I generated, as it were. And I love that reflection process because, once again, in our busy, busy lives, it's not something that we ever take the time to do, is it? To actually mm -hmm. sit and think and give ourselves the space and the time to actually wonder what is it that we really want in life. Now, as a coach, I would love to know from you, is there a way that we can step out of feeling disillusioned and disconnected and find the perfect thing for us, find that thing 
that drives our purpose and our vision and lights us up every day? Is there something that we should be doing or looking at specifically in order to get to that place? So you're saying, is there a magic silver bullet? Yeah, you said. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, not really, but there are things that we can do that help us along the way. At least I, I would never say to someone here, you just do this thing because everybody's different. Um, but there is a tool that I like to use, and I think this is perhaps the, where the value can be found because by tapping into and embracing um, our strengths, and that's our personal strengths, our individual character strengths, then we learn more about ourselves. So that's it helps with the self awareness. But also when we are, once we've identified them and we start actively supporting ourselves with those strengths, everything feels better because we are just being who we are. We're being paid to be ourselves or we're just turning up as our genuine self. I don't want to say authentic self because I think that phrase gets very overused by coaches. But if you, when you identify your own strengths and there's, I'll share some resources that people can access that are free and they're easy. There's no cost involved and you get a little report for free as well. So there's, it's something you can do yourself whilst you're listening to this podcast or later on. So it's, I think it's embracing your strengths is probably like the shortest way to identify exactly where your purpose or the things that are going to light you up. And even if they don't, that's the other really amazing thing about strengths is even when you can't necessarily have your dream business or you can't, you're stuck in a role in a career that's not quite what you want, even by embracing your strengths, it will be, you will find it a more enjoyable experience. You'll feel more engaged and you'll be happier. So oftentimes with clients that I've worked with, they will think they come to me thinking they need to change their career. And after we've actually worked through what their strengths are and how we can kind of build some of those strengths a little bit more into their everyday life, they actually find that the career that they're in is fine. In fact, sometimes they even start enjoying it. So rather than feeling like they've got to go through the whole process of maybe losing benefits, maybe, maybe having to go in a period of unemployment, they say, oh, actually, I can kind of reshape the way I look at things with, through the lens of my strengths and everything actually is, feels just better. Yeah, so. I really love that. I really love that. And I've done the uh, exercise that you're talking about, Rowena. And I think for me, it was an eye opener because... A lot of my life, I've been told that I am a certain way or I have certain strengths. And so I felt like that I needed to fit into those. But this really gave me, once again, that time and space and for reflection to look into the fact that, that perhaps there are strengths that of mine that haven't been identified before. So if someone comes to you and they do this strengths um, exercise and there's mm. things in there that surprise them, how do you help them or how do you coach them through that? Okay. So I think we probably just need to do a tiny bit of a backward step and just clarify for your listeners that the strengths are the things you're naturally good at and they are also the things you often love to do. So the alignment of both those things are your strengths. But sometimes because of, as Mel just hinted at, the sometimes because of the, how we've been brought up or the messaging we've received, those strengths can be underplayed. So they can we can hide them because they don't necessarily kind of align with what other people expect from us. Or we can feel that they're not particularly appropriate. So for example, my top strength is love, which has been the case for over 20 years, even when I was in corporate. But in corporate, you don't go around telling people, oh, my top strength is love, because that's not really deemed appropriate or professional. But once I really acknowledged that, embraced it, I was like, oh, now I know what that actually looks like. So I guess to look at your question, when people say, but I this is a strength for me and I'm surprised by this, but what do I do about it? So then we actually go, we make it really practical. So coaching is all about taking action. And so we actually sit down and say, okay, would you like to? There's always a question. That might be surprising that you have love in your top five signature strengths. Is that something you want to explore? So there's always permission. I don't barge in. Because some people say, no, actually I don't. Hmm. <laughs> Others say, yeah, what does that look like? Or how do I what does that mean? And so then we just take, it's a very much an exploratory, gentle process to actually say, okay, so that looks like this or that looks like that. So for example, with the love, because that's one that's obviously close to my heart, that love means valuing close relations with others, in particular, those in which sharing and caring are reciprocated and being close to people. So for, for that, I think it's not just going and, you know, telling everybody they're amazing and giving them love. It's more about valuing relationships 
and wanting and genuinely caring about other people. It also made me realize for, for myself, my process-based work, lacking human interaction was not really my thing. So that was a good insight for me, right? Even though I was quite surprised to see it. And so similarly for clients, when they might see something like appreciation of beauty and excellence, which is another character strength that quite often pops up and that people are like, well, what does that mean? Does it just mean I like looking at nice pictures? And I'm like, well, yeah, it does mean that. But it also means that you have an eye for perfecting things. You appreciate that there are ways we can improve things. You can, but it can be overplayed. And it could be that you are hypercritical of yourself because you don't ever achieve that perfection. And so that's where we have to explore and see whether if that strength is appearing and they're surprised by it, we need to go deeper and say, well, what, what makes up that strength? And then let's talk through a little bit around how does that play out in your life? And then I get a sense of whether it may be it's something that they are doing a lot of and it's therefore being perceived as a weakness. So an overplayed strength can come across as some as being not so great because strengths there are 24 of them and so it's all about balance yeah I'm not sure if that's given you enough of an answer there now absolutely it has and I love what you just said at the end there overplayed strengths can be a weakness that's really interesting concept so if we're finding that we do have a strength that is overplayed and is becoming a weakness. How do we find that balance? Like, I feel like a lot of parts of our lives are all about finding a balance, but internally that can be a little bit difficult. Mm -hmm. And it's really hard. Like Mm. I want to acknowledge that it is quite hard. Mm. So for example, again, I'm going to use myself because that way I'm not breaching any client rules with love that can come across as in my, in my business as a coach, my signature strength of love, my number one strength, can come across as like overdoing things. So I I provide too much support or I provide too many supportive articles or I kind of over deliver, which is great for some clients, but it's actually not great for me as a business owner if I want to kind of have sustainability around my own personal energy or my time management. Um, And I definitely know that I have a tendency to go there in my business, which is I want to help people so much and I care about them so much. I just kind of fire hose them with information. (laughs) Mm. So that's an overplaying. And the beauty and appreciation of beauty and excellence, one I mentioned, is a very common one amongst successful women. Nearly all my clients who've been incredibly successful in whatever they do have appreciation of beauty and excellence in at least their top five, sometimes their top seven. And often it's that perfecting, improving, striving kind of push of wanting to be the best. Um, But when it's overplayed, imposter syndrome can come up or perfectionism can come up and all those things that we are kind of like, they're positives, but they're negatives. So, you know, when you're in a job interview and you say, oh, I'm a bit of a perfectionist when they say, what's your weakness? Which for an employer, they go, okay, great. You're going to be, we'll know that you're going to get the work done to the nth degree and it'll be fabulous but for ourselves knowing that about ourselves perfectionism can actually be quite debilitating and it can stop us from moving forward so there's that balance so it's the first part is we need to explore what it looks like and then we need to usually as a coach I ask a lot of questions and try and glean from my client how does this play out in their life and sometimes it might play out in their personal life and not their work life that's the other thing to to consider as well yeah, so it could be work or it could be your personal life. Okay, so so what if I'm good at something? So what if I find out what my strength is and whether it's overplayed or, or not overplayed? What can I do with this information on a practical level to improve my life or improve the way I feel? Okay, I love that question because that is all what I'm about, right? <laughs> <laughs> because I know that um, often... In our businesses, and you mentioned this before, things that we we tend to focus on the things we're not good at, so our weaknesses. And so when we focus on strengths instead, so now we suddenly find out, oh, we're actually good at these things. Rather than going, but I'm no good at X, Y, or Z, we actually switch our focus and say, well, these are the things that I'm actually really good at. How do I make more of that? So for example, you will find the way that you work will change a little bit. So you might have a bit more momentum. And I'm going to give you an example, Mel, that I suspect might resonate. You are, for example, super productive with your content and your content creation, and you have huge, great time management skills and techniques, but it's not just that you're super organized to make that happen. And same for myself. It's not just that I'm super organized, that that's why I'm consistent with my content. It's more around energy management and playing to my strengths. 
So my strength of love, I'm going to be coming back to that, is to, to give and to care. And so I use that strength to help me generate my content, which then means it doesn't feel like hard work. So that's where you go, okay, well, I'm good at this thing. How do I embrace that or lean into it to make life easier? And so I found, for example, sitting at my computer to try and write a blog post or write a social media post didn't really vibe with me because I wasn't connected to the energy of service because there was no one here. It was just me and my laptop, um, which wasn't very exciting. But interestingly, even just moving my body and so walking through the park before I had the dog and now with the dog, that's when a heap of my content comes flooding into my head. And so because I see people as I'm walking, sometimes I say hello, sometimes I just wave, sometimes the dogs, you know, do their sniffy thing. But because I'm out in the energy of other people, somehow that taps into that strength and then all my ideas flood in. And I, I also, I know you and I were joking about it earlier. I'm also really good at talking. <laughs> and so <laughs> I found that I can dictate my blog posts or newsletters or social media posts as I'm walking around the park. Mm -hmm. And that way I capture my ideas. They're not perfect, but at least the bulk of the idea is captured as I'm kind of talking it into my phone as I'm walking. So I probably look a bit crazy, this, you know, random lady walking through the park, talking into her phone, dragging the dog behind her. But it works for me because I'm playing to my strengths and then I can be super creative, but in a very short time. Um, so it's using my strength of love and probably a bit of my appreciation of beauty and excellence because I'm much better being out in the park in nature by the water. So leaning into those strengths and then, you know, the other strength of being a little bit of a chatterbox and then I can create my content quite quickly. I love that idea of leaning into the energy of content creation, because as you were talking then, I was thinking to myself, when are those moments when I feel most inspired to create my content? And it is usually after I've spoken to someone on the podcast, after I have interviewed someone on Zoom, after I've had a coffee with my friends. So for me, that connection piece is really, really important. And that's when I feel most in that space of being able to create uh, content that I think is inspirational for at least me, because it feels good and it feels really uh, aligned and easy to actually create. So I love that idea of using your strength to be able to almost manipulate, <laughs> almost manipulate those times where... Uh, you can get into that creative space and, and create your content. I know for a lot of my listeners, and I know this because I have an amazing quiz that you can uh, do to see what sort of content creator archetype you are. I know that a lot of my listeners are what I consider to be free spirits. And they are those people who don't necessarily enjoy the structure or the, they don't enjoy things like uh, batching their content or they don't really love to-do lists that much. However, they tend to want to create content when they feel inspired or feel called to do so, or they have an intuition or a feeling that they need to share something. So I think that this idea of strengths can really, really support that in that you can get yourself into a space of inspiration and wanting to create content by leaning into your strengths first. And I think then that really does help the free spirits because the free spirits can be a little bit up and down with their content. They can be like all in and then all out and then all in. Um, so to be able to create those moments where they feel inspired by using the strengths is, is kind of really special, I think. Yeah, absolutely agree. And look, that's basically what I did. I worked out what worked for me in terms of my energy. And as someone who is very energy driven now, again, mm -hmm. this has been a lot, this has been a learning process. I think I was joking with you another time that I, I'm best working in the shoulder seasons. So I work best in autumn and in spring um, because I've worked out over a number of years that that's when my energy is good over the course of the year. And then in the course of a month, I have different energy levels. And then during a the day, I have a different energy level. So I'm much better in the morning. And by the evening, oftentimes, depending on who I'm coaching, because I often coach in the evening, I can get a little bit loopy, which is very entertaining um, for both myself and my <laughs> fellow uh, my coaching person, but it does sometimes mean that it's um it's a very interesting conversation that we have. Mm -hmm. But we, and it's fine. It's interesting. Coaching at, in the evening is actually pretty fun for me, and so I'll often kind of be wired afterwards because, like you've just shared, Mel, mm -hmm. the connection piece is that I'm buzzing afterwards, and it'll take me a long time to wind down. 
Whereas back in my consulting days, I would often have to do work after hours. So once the little ones were in bed, because they were little then. And so once the my kids were in bed, I'd get back on the computer and start being doing work. And every single time that work was really very poor. And the next day I basically had to start afresh because I'd spent hours the night before, but it was all just kind of rubbish. It just wasn't good quality work because my brain didn't function for that type of process driven work because there was no connection. Um, so that's knowing knowing your strengths. And I, I love what you're talking about the energy because I think that's such a great takeaway when you lean into where your energy comes because that's part of your strengths, right, is identifying the things that you can just do and that are easy for you. So it's kind of like your zone of genius that what's the stuff that is that just comes naturally to you. So for example, another one of my strengths is honesty. That's in my top five. So it is I get very upset when people are dishonest with me because it's, I want it's my value, but it's also something that I just do. I'm very honest and I'm very open, but the openness is also supported by my other top strengths of love, gratitude, hope, appreciation of beauty and excellence, those sorts of strengths that seem to pepper through my top five and seven. But therefore that one I've had to lean into and say, okay, well, I find that easy, but others may not find that easy. And so that's where strengths can also be really valuable when you're running your own business or when you're thinking about starting a business or when you're creating your content. You can say, well, what, what's easy for me? And then if you really find stuff that drains you, maybe look to outsource them. Or if you can't outsource them because you're still early on in your business or you know, you're still bootstrapping, get creative about how you can bring more of your strengths that you do enjoy into that aspect. So as I shared, you know, writing blog posts, I loved creating content, but I just didn't want to have to sit at my computer. So by finding some loopholes, some kind of mental hacks, I then was able to do that. And I think for your free spirits, that's a really nice way of doing it as well, mm. is to go, well, when the mood strikes you and when you're feeling inspired, capture it then. And if that's whilst you're out having coffee with your friends or you're in the supermarket or anywhere else, I don't know, I love the dictate function on my phone and the notes app. I think that they're basically been life-changing yeah and I love this idea of really tapping into your time energy and resources and I really love this idea of doing things your way because we carry this weight especially with content creation I find of the shoulds we should be on it Instagram, we should be on LinkedIn, we should be writing blog posts, we should start a podcast, all of these shoulds. And if we fall into the trap of doing the shoulds, then they become hard and heavy, right? And when they're hard and heavy, we're obviously not using our strengths. So I think that the idea of really making sure that you are leaning into your strengths and doing it your way can really help the flow of your content creation. So I love that so much. Mm. Thank you so much for sharing all of this. My mind is a little bit blown and I know that in the show notes, we will share some resources that people can go and have a look at their strengths as well, as well as I know that you have a free resource of your own, uh, Rowena, around confidence boosting ideas, because I feel like that once we lean into our strengths as well, then that, that's really going to help our confidence, right? Completely. In fact, one of my clients, I'm going to just share this because I think it's a beautiful example of what you just shared, Mel, is that the shoulds, right? My, mm. my, my fabulous client was a corporate client um, and was very much trying to keep things professional. So he, he had a role to where he had to create content for his peers. It wasn't going to external audience, but he did need to create content that was shared amongst the organization. And he felt very heavy about it, it had to be professional. And he found it really hard work. He goes, oh, I'm just no good at this. But then once we worked together and we identified that humor was actually in his top three to five strengths. And once he kind of went, oh, that makes sense because I'm actually, I love seeing the absurd things. And he was great with his family like that. He just had never embraced it in his work. Once we kind of workshopped that, he felt liberated. And so then his content flowed and his ideas flourished. And the best part, as his confidence increased, ultimately he got an attractive job offer to for his actual dream job. So mm -hmm. his confidence kind of flowed from the strengths and then he got this dream job where he could just be himself. And so as he said to me, I got to be paid to be myself, which is always the ultimate goal, right? Like we just get to turn up as ourselves and people give us money for that. That's like awesome. <laughs> And so it really seems fitting that I'm going to ask this question that I ask all of my guests, Rowena, around their superpowers, because I'm all about women not only owning their superpowers, but identifying them as well. So what would you say is your superpower? Oh, I think maybe I'm going to do a double barrel and say clarity and simplicity. 
Mm-hmm. So even back in my corporate days, my zone of genius or superpower was getting to the heart of the matter really quickly and then simplifying the steps to basically what was actually essential. So my corporate clients would call me out precisely because they knew that I would find the most efficient and effective way for them to get the outcome they needed, but still ensuring the key elements like company core process requirements were completed. So that's one. And then the other part is ideas generation. So when I'm coaching with clients, the ideas generation bit is where I get really super pumped and energized. So my brain starts sparking and I, it's just fun. I love that kind of stuff. I get really kind of, yeah, energized by those things. And I can definitely see that in you as well, the clarity and the simplicity of, you know, laying out all of the possible solutions and finding the right one and the idea generation as well. You always come up with the most brilliant questions to to ask people. I just love it so much. Um, Before we wrap up today, Rowena, is there any final parting words of wisdom that you have for my beautiful listeners? Yeah. Um, (laughs) I'm going to actually share my favorite quote because I think this has driven me for many years and it helps me get over my procrastination which comes from the the strength of um, appreciation of beauty and excellence so that when overplayed the perfectionism the procrastination kicks in with that particular strength and so the quote is do what you can with what you have where you are which was originally said by Theodore Roosevelt. And so it's basically a reminder that I use to not wait for all the things or until I feel ready. And it works in so many situations. So it's basically get started with what you have now. And even if you aren't sure, by getting started, you learn and discover what works and what doesn't work, both for yourself, maybe for your business and also for your family. And it does apply in all areas, like even with like um, cold climate actions and stuff like that. When we were working through that as a family, we just say, well, what can we do with what we have right now with what we've got? Um, and it works when you're starting your business too. So I, it's my go-to quote as a reminder to not kind of get stuck. Yeah, beautiful reminder not to get overwhelmed and to take those small uh, pieces of action. Well, thank you so much for coming on the podcast today, Rowena, and sharing your wisdom with my listeners. I truly appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. It has been an absolute pleasure. Thanks so much for listening. That's it for another week. To get more powerful content in your life, make sure you're following along on socials. My handle is at Meld Business. And just in case you're wondering, the groovy music for this podcast was created by Just Here on SoundCloud. I'd also be super grateful if you took a moment to rate and review this podcast so more amazing women like you can experience the power of content. And if you're like, hell Mel, stop talking. I'm ready to work with you now. Here's how we can work some powerful content magic together. Firstly, come and join the Content Effect, my membership inspiring women with service-based businesses to ditch the content chaos and start creating standout content that gets you noticed and makes sales. You can join us by using the link in the show notes or just Google the Content Effect. The second way we can work together is via my one-on-one packages. We can create a sustainable content strategy or start to build out your client journey. It's up to you. Hop on over to meldbusinessservices.com.au forward slash services to find out more. Until next time, have a beautiful week and embrace the power of your content.